Hey guys, welcome to your Wellness Wednesday. You're here with Chelsea Marie from ChelseaMarieCoaching.com. And today I'm gonna to explain to you guys the six top causes uh, for feeling fatigue. Now you could be feeling fatigue from just, there's, like I said, there's many reasons. Today I'll cover six, but it could be basically waking up feeling tired and just not having all your energy throughout the day. Or this could be on the total opposite end of the spectrum where you feel like you can barely get out of bed and you just feel like a zombie all throughout the day. So before I dive in, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. If you guys don't know who I am, hey Rob, thanks for joining. If you guys don't know who, know who I am, as I mentioned, I'm Chelsea Marie. I'm a board certified health coach and I specialize in helping men and women who want to not just lose weight, but ultimately just feel amazing in their body and really take control of their health. So, okay, so by the way, if you guys know, if you guys have questions, post them down below. I will get back to you during the live. If not, I will get back to you after the live as soon as I can. All right, so cause number one is dysglycemia. So this is basically an imbalance in your blood sugar level. So you could be struggling with hyper or hypoglycemia. Basically, your blood sugar level is imbalanced, it's unstable. You have fluctuations where it either goes too high or it goes too low. So the best way to really work with this, to balance it out, is to focus on incorporating solid meals throughout your day um, but mainly also having your macronutrients so a good healthy dose of your fats your carbohydrates and your proteins now when i say carbohydrates what i really mean is your leafy greens and your vegetables not that grains are bad for you it's just i find that we find them so abundantly like everywhere um, and they're so easy to fill up on but what we really need is a really good variety of our leafy greens to get good fiber and a really good wide variety of nutrients so really doing this, like I said, avoiding snacking too, because think of food as, so fuel, fuel, food is basically fuel. So think of it as if you were going to go on a road trip and you knew that you needed a tank and a half of gas to get from where you are to where you want to be, but you left your place with only a quarter tank of gas, you'd be stopping, you know, like, like six times just to get to where you want to be. And chances are, if you were going from one city to another, you might not even have enough gas to get from one city to another if you only had a quarter tank of gas. So this is the same throughout the day. Your food is fuel for you. If your meals are not satiating your appetite, if it's not enough, you are going to run out super quickly of fuel and you're going to need more food. If you don't have your macronutrients and your blood sugar is also going to crash and this is also going to leave you feeling like you need more fuel as well. So having your proper portions um, but also your macronutrients like I said your fats or carbohydrates and your protein will allow you to get from breakfast to lunch to dinner without the need to snack and leaving you feeling topped up. So balancing your blood sugar level is huge not just for having energy but also balancing your hormones and reducing inflammation. So cause number two is gut disturbances. So if you are struggling with any type of indigestion, whether it is bloating, um, whether you have acid reflux, um, whether you have gas, whatever it is, this is a sign that you have some inflammation going on and that whatever, I mean, if it's once in a while, that's one thing um, that obviously says a lot about the meal that you just ate, obviously something in that meal isn't working for you. But if it's happening all the time, then you actually have quite a bit of inflammation happening in your gut. So to really reverse this, this, the best thing that you can do is to focus on just eliminating processed foods out of your diet, um, eliminating alcohol, sugar, caffeine, um, having meals that are basically whole foods and cooked at home. Um, getting a food sensitivity test is going to be huge for this too because if you are eating foods that have an underlying sensitivity and are creating what, what I like to call like silent um, inflammation over time it can create huge issues. So getting some kind of food sensitivity test done from a naturopath will be really great with helping you out and knowing what foods not to eat to really reduce your inflammation. So think of it as a garden. If you're a gardener this will make total sense. If you're not then just try to you know follow along. So basically with a garden if you want to have a herb garden, you need not just proper soil, but you also have to have water, you have to have sunlight, you need a whole wide variety of different things to make sure that you can grow your plants. So at this point, your body is your ecosystem, your body is a garden. So if your soil is too acidic, then your herbs aren't going to grow. If your soil is not acidic enough, then it won't be able to germinate because the bacteria is what helps it to keep growing. So your body is the same way. If the foods that you're eating are causing a disruption in your in your bacteria in your gut flora and it's creating acidity and toxicity your body is going to be struggling with trying to balance itself out you are going to feel so tired you won't be able to digest 
digest your foods properly. And if your foods aren't digesting and they're not being eliminating, they are just accumulating in your body. They're actually creating toxic gases. They're creating further disruptions with your gut. And it's going to give you issues, not just with energy, but also with with imbalancing your hormones. Um, if you didn't already know this, your body actually gets rid of excess estrogen through bowel movement. So if you are not going every single day, if you have gut issues, you can guarantee expect that you're going to have um, toxic blood. You're going to have hormonal issues. And then at the end of the day, it's going to leave you feeling extremely, extremely tired. So the best way to really fix this is to focus on eliminating alcohol, sugar, caffeine, all of these foods that deplete nutrients out of our body that affect our gut flora and um, that really just create inflammation. Okay, so three is your sleep environment. So making sure not just to have quantity, but quality of sleep is huge. So trying to get to bed at at least 1030 is going to be huge with helping your body get back on track with a proper sleep cycle, um, making sure that your bedroom is the right environment, removing electronics, not having any Wi-Fi in your bedroom. All this stuff will actually keep your body awake and buzzed, uh, making sure if you want some light in your bedroom, you can do something like a little salt lamp, something soft. Um, what else? But basically, oh yes, one thing I want to point out is I know so many people who do this, and I used to be so bad at this too, is I would like do my work in my bedroom, I would eat in my bedroom. Your subconscious mind, you everything that you do, all your habits train your subconscious mind. So if you want your subconscious mind to know that your bedroom is your place, it's your sanctuary to fall asleep and to rest, you need to train your mind and your body that that's exactly what it's for. So when you start working in your bedroom or eating in your bedroom, you're confusing your body and your subconscious. It doesn't know, is this where I eat? Is this my place of work? Is this where I sleep? So when you can really create that perfect environment for your bedroom where the lighting is there, no synthetic lights, keep in mind that when you are watching TV, when you have your laptop open, all these synthetic lights actually block your body's ability to produce melatonin. So if you are watching electronics up until you go to sleep, your body won't have enough melatonin to actually get you to fall asleep. Hi. So that is one of the tips I want to share with you guys for having proper sleep environment. And then number four is nutritional deficiencies. So this really ties into your gut health. At the end of the day, avoiding alcohol, sugar, caffeine is going to prevent you from depleting your nutrients because that's exactly what those, what those sources of things do. When it is takeout, 90% of packaged foods, just know that they are definitely depleting your body's nutrients. If it's not fresh, it's not going to have its regular enzymes. It's not going to have its full spectrum. Um, you know, it's got preservatives. It's got sweeteners to give it flavor because chances are most of the time when things are on the shelf they're adding a ton of what's called natural flavor but really that's just a word for like 50,000 different chemicals that your body has no idea how to process so check your labels if you can as often as possible just do whole foods I know that life gets busy but the minute that you prioritize this you will have so much more energy to do more work to be with your family to really enjoy your quality of life as well um, so, oh yeah, so really just incorporating your vegetables into every single one of your meals is going to be huge. So I know lots of people are doing lots of fats, lots of proteins, but keep in mind, your body needs all your, um, your body needs your vegetables for not just vitamins, but it also needs them for minerals. Your body uses these minerals to create stomach acid and to also create bile. If you don't have enough potassium or magnesium from your, from, from, from your vegetables, you won't have enough stomach acid to actually break down your proteins. Your body won't have enough enzymes to actually break down your proteins as well. And then if your body wants to be able to properly emulsify and break down fats, guess what? It also needs potassium. It also needs folate. If your body wants to build beautiful, healthy red blood cells, your body needs, you know, folate, not folic acid, but folate from your food. So incorporating your vegetables into every single one of your meals is really going to help you to top up your nutrients. So that way your body can properly create all that it needs to create. And then what else do we have here? Okay, so the ability to detoxify. So this is huge. We have four elimination channels. We have urination, perspiration, respiration, and defecation. So urination is basically your body's ability to rid toxins through your kidneys and through urination. So that's why drinking our water on a daily basis is going to be so huge because if we're not eliminating toxins out of our body, we are bombarded by toxins. The air that we're breathing, 
the water that we're drinking. Hopefully you have good tap water. Hopefully you have a good water filtration system because there are definitely chemicals and even um, hormones and water supply. Um, making sure that you are using quality shampoo, quality body care, because guess what? Lots of lipstick ladies has, heavy, has large traces of lead in it. Um, they have actually found that by testing women's blood who use a lot of cosmetics, they are finding lots of heavy metals. Um, you'll find it in your shampoos, your conditioners, your body washes, like I said, your makeup, up. You're going to find it in plastic containers, everything. Basically, we're bombarded by toxins. So if we're not, and our body knows how to eliminate them, well, pretty well, but by if our body is bombarded and it's nutrient deficient, then it's going to have a really, really, really hard time getting rid of those. And then we end up just feeling extremely tired. Think of when you go out drinking, you know, you are out partying with a girlfriend or a couple friends. And the next morning you wake up, you feel intoxicated. That alcohol, the fried foods, your body can feel feel it. That is the exact same thing when we are bombarded with toxins on a daily basis and we are not ridding them out of our body. So our body naturally wants to get rid of them, but the more that we can support them, the more it will do a better job and the less tired we will feel. So drinking your water to, uh, for, to support urination, um, perspiration, so just sweating, getting a good sweat on as often as you can. Infrared saunas are amazing for this and really pulling out heavy metals out of your body. Um, and then we have respiration, so just making sure to do really good deep breaths. You can go for a walk or a hike, but if you're not really focusing on your breath, chances are you're probably doing more harm on your body. So every single day, focus on your breath as often as you can. Not only will you be helping your body in eliminating toxins, but you'll be getting in more oxygen, helping your red blood cells to bring that oxygen all throughout your body so it can heal and repair. And then we have defecation. So making sure that we have proper elimination of our food through our bowel movements every single day. This is where your leafy greens come in. This is where um, your, your cruciferous vegetables come in, your cauliflower, your broccoli, your radish, they really help your body with digestion and eliminating all those toxins. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Brad. Hey, Ruthie. Thanks for joining, guys. So really supporting our bodies for elimination channels is going to be huge in helping your body to reduce its toxic load, not just in heavy metals, but just in all sorts of toxins that we are surrounded by. But like I said, the air that we breathe, cosmetics, all that kind of stuff. And then the last thing I want to talk about that is depleting your energy is stress. So we all know that stress obviously has an effect on our body, on our energy. It increases our cortisol level. This is going to affect our digestion. This is also going to increase histamine. This is also going to release uh, glucose into our bloodstream, causing belly weight gain. But one thing I find that we don't, that most people don't really know and aren't aware of is it actually affects gene expression. So we have what's called methylation in our body. So our body goes through a process where things become methylated. So methylation, I find the best way to really explain this is methylation is basically your body's ability to turn on and to turn off certain genes. So, and it also converts things. So as an example, when you consume um, B12 and folate from your foods, your liver has to convert them into a form that is active so that your body can actually use it to create red blood cells. So these forms are methylated. So as an example, folate is converted and it's converted to methylfolate. Um, B12 becomes methyl uh, cobalamin. It, your body is always methylating things to turn them on. Methylation also plays a huge role in helping your body to detoxify and creating glutathione, which is your body's main antioxidant to reverse oxidative stress. Um, so if, if we don't have proper methylation, our body is basically aging and accelerating at a way quicker uh, rate. So making sure that, you know, and what happens is when we are stressed out, our methylation becomes, we, our body becomes undermethylated. We become, we don't have enough of this methylation. So our body can't actually convert things properly. So even though we are eating our nutrients, if we are under stress and we don't have enough methylation, our body can't convert things. And then we become deficient in all different areas. So really finding ways to support our stress, whether it is through yoga or meditation, and that's where supplements come in too. You know, having supplements for a short period of time to really boost your body up until you can really gradually incorporate and, and, and integrate foods into your diet and really maintain them. Um, and sorry, and then really use food as a way to maintain those levels. So um, methylation, you'll find that like, there are B complexes that are methylated. They're called activated B vitamins. Um, if you are under a lot of stress, those are the B vitamins that you really want to be focusing on. Um, anyway, so those are the six main causes um, for feeling extreme fatigue. I hope those have helped you guys out. If you have any questions, please post them down below. I am going to hop on over now to the heart 
Core Living Group, I actually have a little exercise to help you understand which area of your life is depleting your stress. So if you want to find out and if you want that exercise, make sure to hit the link above and to join me in the Heart Core Living Group. Anyways, you guys have an awesome day and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.